All right, this video is going to be about rocks, and in particular, these two rocks. Uh, this rock is a big piece of iron, and this rock is a piece of glass. So what does iron and glass have to do with one another? What do these rocks have to do with one another? Well, this is a meteorite. Um, this I've had for a while, and uh, maybe people will see it's got uh, green structure in it, or the, where the there's crystal crystalline faces of the uh, of the iron. It's kind of cool. So this is uh, obviously just a piece that was cut in half to show off uh, the kind of the lumpy part where it came came in through the atmosphere and burned up, created a little cavity. So I think there's a special name for that. I forget what these are called, but uh, uh, it looks kind of cool from this from this side, and also looks cool from this side depending on what you're interested in. Um, so this particular uh, meteorite came from Russia. Uh, it is. I'm going to butcher the uh, pronunciation, but it's a C. Cicate Elin. I think that's the right way to say it. Anyway, I'll, I'm sure I butchered it. But it's, uh, it is on the eastern coast of uh, Russia and just across from Hokkaido, Japan. Uh, so that's where it fell. And it fell in 1947. Uh, so it's a fairly recent uh, meteor uh, fall. Uh, it was a very large meteor. It was uh, thought to be about 100,000 100, kilograms. Um, and a lot of it uh, has been dug up. Tons and tons of it have been dug up and been sold in various ways on the black market, on the normal market. Uh, I, I don't know how easy it is to get a hold of any longer. I bought this quite a while ago. Um, I believe there's still a uh, black market trade in it and stuff. But anyway, it's a uh, it's called meteor. It, it's uh, fairly heavy. This is a nice big, a nice big piece. It's uh, it's it's pretty heavy. It's 93% uh, iron, 6% uh, nickel, and uh, half a percent cobalt. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. I don't know where this came from, whether um, where the iron came from, whether it was part of the rocks in the um, formation of our solar system, or it was external to that. So I'm not sure what generation star made this. When stars fuse and collapse, they uh, end up being iron. And when it goes kaboomy or whatever, or it just kind of fizzles out, it floats around until it finally decides to make a new planet somewhere. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's the uh, that's the meteor, right? So what's this rock? This is a fused quartz, silica dioxide, and uh, you can see it's kind of clear. Uh, do I have something that shows off its clearness? Uh, can yeah, there you, you kind of see that you can you can actually you can actually see through it. So it's a clear piece, and. Uh, so glass is something that humans made. They uh, learned how to melt it down and uh, make glass and stuff. Um, but this predates that. This predates humans making glass. And so there's an interesting story about uh, people who discovered this. Um, this is what's known as Libyan glass. It, it, uh, it occurs naturally in Libya and it's strewn all over the desert floor. There's like just tons of it uh, on the desert. And uh, I'm lucky to have a piece of it. It's not easy to find. And um, it was thought to have been made 29 million years ago. So how was it made? Um, well, l there was a big meteor that fell to Earth. And it was a big fireball. And when it came and was burning up and it was above the Libyan desert, it got so hot that it melted the sand and fused it into glass. And so this is a uh, sand fused into glass by, by one of these guys. <laughs> and uh, if you look at this under a microscope, you can see uh, little bits of sand that aren't completely melted. And uh, so it's really, really fun to, really fun to look at. There's a great story about, um, 
a piece of jewelry from uh, from Egypt from the King Tut uh, uh, find, and there is a uh, cool piece of jewelry. Um, so I'm a real Egyptology nut. Uh, uh, I, I studied it. Uh, I got interested in hieroglyphics. I taught myself hieroglyphics. I can read it. Um, I went to. I got to go to Egypt and spend a week going through the tombs, and uh, it was nice to be able to read some of the things on the walls of the tombs. And anyway, uh, like I said, Egyptology nut. Uh, let me show you. Let me show you a picture of a book. Uh, this is a big book, so let me let me see if I can uh, get it into the camera here. Uh, I'm gonna have to back way out. Uh, so this is a this is a piece of jewelry uh, that was on King King's Tut breast when he was buried, and uh, it has a bunch of uh, symbolism and stuff, but it has this nice scarab uh, symbol for reincarnation and uh, life and stuff. Uh, it was thought that the scarab beetle rolled the sun disk across the sky. Anyway, um, and they, they, they it, you know, the, the dung beetle put its young, and there's a whole kind of circle of life thing that they kind of liked. Anyway, <laughs> it's this stone here. So this stone was originally thought to be some type of, uh, uh, some type of stone. And some guy back in the 90s was at the uh, museum in, in Cairo and looked at that and said, no, nah, that's not that kind of rock. I've seen this type of rock before. I've been to Libya. And he identified this as actually Libyan glass. And um, so, yeah, so cool. let me uh, get this book out of the way. It's a really heavy book. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there you go. Um, meteorites, Libyan glass. There's another place where this glass occurs. And that's in uh, the test site for the Trinity blast. And uh, the, the uh, 10 kiloton blast out in the desert was enough to uh, melt some glass. And uh, uh, I don't have a piece of that. I found this in a rock shop up in Northern California. And I knew right away what it was, so I bought it from the guy. Later the rock shop closed down, so he's gone. Um, I think I bought this one off of eBay. <laughs> back when. Uh, but anyway, uh, meteorites and fused sand, they, uh, they go together. <laughs>